One, two, three, four. grateful to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. Just thanking God for another day. Amen. Before we get started, amen, we're going to ask everyone if they would stand and we're just going to have prayer real fast. And then we're going to jump in this and we're going to get in and we're going to get out the way. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lady all, if you don't mind leading us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to see you all. Amen. Pastor Avery, good to see you. Laker, Jersey on. Yes, yeah, good to see you, but not the Jersey. Hallelujah. <laughs> We pray that everyone had a, a great day today. We pray that your day was fruitful on today. Amen. So on tonight, we're just going to spend a few moments um, talking about the power of prayer. Amen. And as we know, prayer is so essential in our lives. Amen. Especially being believers. Amen. It is just so so important, amen. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk back tonight, amen. Yeah. Amen, because we have a lot of prayer warriors. You know, we have some prayer warriors in the house, amen. And so we're gonna talk back, but when we talk about prayer, somebody, what is prayer? Communication with God. Communication with God. One-on-one -on -one time with God. Anyone else? So I went to the dictionary because and see, and I just wanted to see what what old Webster had to say about prayer. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. Yeah. So he know everything. So, so we just stopped by and see what he had to say about prayer on tonight. So he said a solemn request for help or an expression of thanks addressed to God. Why do we pray? Mother? Because we, we pray for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. or, um, <coughs> to have, I know what I pray for, um, to have um, the, Lord, for the Lord to bless me with the health. Okay. And for, um, and for happiness. Pray for happiness, good health. What's wrong, Sister Tisha? Come on. Um, I pray for guidance. Guidance. Like if you're going on a trip somewhere, you know, you need to go to the I-95 or I-75. Mm -hmm. You need to know which one you're going. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We need direction. Mm -hmm. How many times we get up in the morning, <clears throat> take our shower, put our clothes on, 
get our key, jump in our car and head directly out the door, put our key in the, in the ignition, start the car, put the car in reverse to get out the driveway, put the car in drive and go about your business. We do that too often because we're comfortable and we think just because we leave, we're going to return the same way. And sometimes we don't return. I, I've been driving um, the 48 and 417 a little bit more because the tolls are free. Thank the Lord, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to change Saturday, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump back on my old route, hey man, because I'm, I'm kind of I'm a little stingy, okay? Because those eight tolls to get to work is, is a bit much. So, so I've been I've been driving. 408 and 417, but I noticed because the tolls are free, more there's more cars on the highway. Right. And with, 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 with more cars become a lot more reckless drivers. That's true. And so I got home today because these people were driving like crazy. So I got home today, I said, like, man, I've been really enjoying driving the tolls for free. And told my wife, I said, well, then this alert popped up on my phone. Um, the Department of Transportation is having some issues because um, so many people have been traveling for free and they say we're beginning to be concerned because of the amount of money that they've been losing. And so underneath that, they said, um, things are gonna change real quick. So I jumped on my phone and I said, well, I wanna see how fast things are gonna change. So I said, well, the 16th at 6 a.m., tolls will be enforced again. So I grabbed my phone and said, today at 13. We got three more days, but typically only got one more day because tomorrow's Friday and I don't drive the one to Monday. I said, so well, Lord, I think I'm going back to my old route on Monday. Two tolls and off. But before I leave home, I always pray for safe travel and mercy. I ask God the Lord take me and bring me. I don't know about y'all, but even with these glasses, sometimes I don't see very good. Sometimes I, 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 I be thinking about wanting to get over, but God said, keep going straight. Then all of a sudden I see this car going past me. I say, Lord, I thank you. Because sometimes your eyes play trick on you. You know, and I, I was focused, but they just, you know, and so sometimes people drive a little faster. And I was, we were just talking about driving fast earlier. And I told them I learned to obey, obey the law of the land since I moved to Florida. So I drive a little slower now. And people tend to go past me, you know, and I'm like, man, am I driving that slow? You know, I kind of look up, I say, well, I'm doing about 70. That's, that's okay. But then I, I, you know, then peer pressure shit sits in because people going past you. So you feel the need to, to pick the speed up a little bit more, you know? So I said, well, Lord, um, am I really being safe? So I said, well, you know, COVID did teach me something. It taught, me, it taught me a little bit more patient because people was dying so fast. I said, well, Lord, I want to slow down because if I speed up, I might be speeding up my life. So I'm going to learn to slow down. So I allow people to go by. But prayer is so important. And sometimes God wakes us up. Well, I'll say, I'll just speak for my own self. Sometimes he wakes me up about 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Most people use that to go to the party. But I just lay there some days. I just lay there because that is my time to connect with God. So what is your time? When is your time? It wasn't like always, but the older I get, a little bit more knowledge about God. And I remember my mother don't ever go to bed without thanking God. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get up without thanking God. Mm -hmm. And like with me, I, I have a time set, just like you said, mm -hmm. like to just get down on my knees and thank Him for waking me up. Right. And I'm just saying that it's like with us, we got all our younger people really believe me, they're watching us mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And we gotta lead that path like our parents did for us mm -hmm. so that they would know 
who God is. Every little bit helps. Every little and bit. Every little bit that we can do, it needs to be about us praying for each other also. Amen. We gotta pray for ourselves and pray for each other. Brother, you said something. Mm -hmm. God for mercy. So I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna see something real quick. Mother said, I get down on my knees and I pray. So the question on the floor. How many people get down on their knees and pray? Or do we lay in bed and pray? I, I, I sometimes find myself cheating. I, I lay there and think, oh, I just, because I be in bed, I don't feel like, you know, I just sit up with a quick prayer and, you know, and then roll over. <laughs> no, you know, I'm not saying you have to get on your knees, but that's the way I was taught. You know, if you, if you, if you can, if you can, why not honor God? You know, you know, and so, you know, that are not mm -hmm. able to yeah. do that. Like See, I used, to, I, used to, I used to visit my aunt them on the weekends, and, and I used to go down there and visit with my aunt, and every night before we, we got in bed, me and her got down and prayed together. But she prayed so long. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I, I, I'm a young kid now, and I was, I was starting to run out of words, you know. I was like, you know, so so there was times when I just I just found myself doing this, and then I would I would look over at her like this, and she was still praying. I was like, well, Lord, what, what, how much she got to talk to you about? But but then I was just act like I was still down praying too. But I was halfway asleep, and then I would look at her, and then when she get up, I say Amen, and then I get up. But, they were, but I didn't. I didn't understand the significance of prayer, but she taught me. Yeah. She taught me before you lay down, yeah. you give yeah. God reverence. You That's pray right. to Him. Thank you, Lord. Okay. And, and, and so as I got older, I understood. Yeah. Because my mother said, Boy, I'm praying for you. Yeah. Yeah, I understood why. I mean, I knew why because I was yeah. doing some stuff I had no business doing. Mm -hmm. And she said, Boy, I'm praying for you. Yeah. And then she said, Mother praying for you too, which mother was the pastor of the church, so we call her mother. Yeah. Said mother praying for you too, but I went out there and I started getting in trouble. And everybody around me was getting caught. Mm -hmm. And I kept getting away. Mm -hmm. I was so close to hell, my clothes smelled like smoke. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't understand how I was getting away. Everybody else. everybody else was getting caught, but, but somebody prayed for me. Yeah. They had me on their mind. They took the time to pray for me. So I was making it on mama and them prayers because I wasn't praying. Maybe I'm just by myself. But but when I got older and then got my own relationship with God, then I understood the significance of prayer. Then I began to teach my own kids why it's important to pray. And Prayer is not a one-way conversation. That's right. But sometimes we pray and we when we when we we petition God. And then after we get done petitioning God, we tend to get up. So how do you know what he was gonna say to you if you didn't stay around long enough? Have y'all ever talked to somebody? I mean, let me rephrase. Have y'all ever listened to somebody, but y'all thought it was a conversation, and they didn't let you talk? They just talked the whole time, and you tried to get a word in, but you couldn't get a word in. Right, that's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but it don't seem like it. Look at him. He said that to me. But but. <laughs> Goes on to your house, stays in your house. <laughs> but 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 what if God felt that way? What if God felt like I'm, 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 I, I, I really have something to say to my brother and my sister, but they won't be quiet long enough to let me to tell them what I want to tell them. So prayer is not a one-way conversation, amen. 
So our first scripture this morning, this evening, is going to come from Mark um, 1 and 35. Someone read, grab that if you can read that for me. I would greatly appreciate it. You said 35? Yes, ma'am. 135. 135, yes. Chapter 1, and, verse 35. Okay, and yeah. in the morning, mm -hmm. rise it up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a sub, sub, solitary <laughs> sovereign place and there prayed. Early in the morning, while it was dark, mm -hmm. Jesus got up and slipped out to a solitary place to pray. Early in the morning. I just told y'all he wakes yeah. me up early. early. Yeah. So so how many people pray early in the morning? Why do you why do you why do you all pick early in the morning to pray? It's quiet. Yeah. And it's a, like a peaceful time. Peaceful. With God. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can, can hear, hear him better. over and over mm -hmm. from what he's done for you already by just waking you up. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Veronica. It is. Um, it was a, a, a two part for that for me in reading scripture and trying to understand why that was a particular time of the day. One, because it does cease distraction and mm -hmm. noise and things like that. Yep. So you have no. Nothing interfering. We right. definitely have that, you know, a long solitary time. But then I also think of with first fruits. Mm -hmm. Because if you give him the first part of your day, that's what he is able to have Amen. the rest of the day in that's order. So mm -hmm. But if you start the day, and I call myself start the day, go on by today, you realize, oh, yeah. you know, then you try to, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry, I apologize, and go ahead because you can tell the day is starting to mm -hmm. do its own thing and go off any kind of way. And if you remember, like, you know, today, this is the day the Lord has made. Mm. That's right. So it's giving him the day. Give him the day. She's saying the first fruit. Yeah. When you yeah. open your eyes or you know, you think you're supposed to go oh, to the okay. bathroom, but that's the time that God's giving you yeah. to, to, to thank him, amen. Mm -hmm. to, to to connect with him. That's so it's right. early in the morning. There's no distraction. Most of the time everybody in the house is asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Even the bugs are asleep. Yeah. Do you turn the light on, you wake them up, and here they come. Yeah. I call them cousins. <laughs> the cousins out <are> here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but first thing in the morning, we give him honor. Then that, that another part say while it was dark. So first thing is it's still 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, it's still dark. Right. Ain't nobody up. That's my best time, y'all. That's my best time with God. Yeah. First thing in the morning, my wife is asleep. When I was at home, the kids would be asleep. Mm -hmm. It seemed like every five, five o'clock in the morning, I was at my kitchen table. Mm -hmm. I don't sit in a room and read. And I go to the kitchen table. There's nobody there because I know no one else is coming around. Right. Would you say something, Pastor Avery? I was going to say, um, and I think the reason why, you know, God wakes a lot of people up for me for, um, morning. Um, in scripture that's called the fourth watch. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk through the water traces, it's called the fourth watch. And the thing about what, what's significant about the fourth watch and his praying, it represents transition. Mm -hmm. All right. So it represents transition. So God is, is waking you up at that time at that what they call the fourth watch, mm -hmm. then it's because he's getting ready to, to how how are you going to properly transition? Not be properly transition in prayer then we're prepared. And I think I, I know she said that, like the other said it. When, when, I, when I miss those times, mm -hmm. I get up and just try to pray like, you know, just go throughout the day, two, three, in the afternoon, probably by the time I get around it, my whole, the rest of my day is just off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't properly transition mm -hmm. from one state to the other. So I think that's why God said, hey, look, I'm trying to show you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know, sometimes even while we're sleeping, you know what I mean? The spirit, the spirit realm is still mm -hmm. going on. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 No, God true. said, let me, let, let me transition. I think that's pivotal because he wants us to and I know, I know my wife probably did the same thing, but you know, when I'm sleeping, I know she probably stick a hand over there and lay hands on me and Lord touch this man right now while he's sleep, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, because I don't know what he's thinking, but, but just touch my toes. So she's covering me while I'm sleeping. And when I wake up in the morning, take a glance over there, throw these hands on top of him. 
Lord, keep my wife, protect my wife, protect our home, and different things like that. So we have to pray for one another. We have to cover each other. And sometimes we hear pastors say, you pray for you, 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 you anoint your house, you pray for... Those directions are not given just for us to just... And so we have to put those things into action. And so... The second part of the scripture, the last part is say, and he slipped, slipped out into a solitary place to pray, a quiet place. Mm -hmm. My aunt used to leave everything. We was going in the room. She closed the door, and sometimes she just turned the lights out, yeah. and we just we just got down on our knees and prayed. She prayed for a long time, y'all. I, I ran out of words, but I was just like, Lord, hey, I hope she's praying for me still. But. <laughs> But a, it's nothing like a quiet place mm -hmm. with God. There's nothing like being in this place where it's just you and him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would pray before I go to sleep. God would wake me up in the middle of the night and just start giving me words. Yeah. And so I, mm -hmm. I roll over and I, I try to find my, yeah. my pen because I sleep with pens and, and paper and stuff all around. And I, and I Because I don't want to miss it. So I grab it and I start writing stuff down and I, I write it where I can interpret it in the morning because sometimes my, my writing be going this way and that way because I be halfway sleeping and I don't have my glasses on. But when he be downloading, uh -huh. I want to try to catch it. Amen. Because if, if, right. if, 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 if I don't catch it at that moment and I try to go to sleep and wake up, it's gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have to get it when God gives it to you. So it's, it's just nice and quiet and nobody's snoring. It's just God just speaking to you. I just wake up and I just start writing things down. Then I get up in the morning, I look at it and it makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was times before I had to preach, I was sitting there trying to figure things out. What I, what I wanted to preach on mm -hmm. and what I wanted to say. God shut it down. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wasn't nothing going in and wasn't nothing coming out. And, and, and so I would just go get in bed and go to sleep. And God would give me a whole word in a dream. In a dream. And I would wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That was my time. I said, God, I thank you. And it was a routine that it takes me through every time before I have to get ready to speak. It's a certain routine and it never fails. How he takes me through the same routine. Man, God, it's the same, the exact same routine every single time. You know why? He's getting Reggie out of the way. Yeah. He removing Reggie because Reggie wanted to tell y'all what Reggie wanted to say. But he said, not so. Mm -hmm. And he would shut it down and every single time at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, he said, okay now, Reggie, I can use you now. I'm like, Lord, I gotta speak to your people. He's like, well, go to sleep. Go to sleep. I'll, I'll give you the word. Because now you can listen to me. Now I can speak to you. And then the words that I speak to you will come through you. But I can't do it while all these distractions is going on at 11 o'clock at night. The wife is still walking back and forth. The kid, I can't do my best work. And so when it's quiet, that's when God began to speak to us. Anyone else have anything to say before we move on? You notice, you notice throughout the Bible when Jesus will always slip away, then the disciples got a little hungry. They say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Because they wanted to learn too. Why are you always slipping away? Sometimes when you're around people, you know what? I, I just I'll be right back. I gotta go do something real quick, <laughs> you know. But 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 after you have given out so much, sometimes you need to steal away, right. and you need to pray. Because mm -hmm. have you ever just gave 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 yeah. gave and you have nothing left? Yeah. You just you just like everybody everybody you you the problem solver solver for everybody. Right. You don't have nothing left. And so there's a time when you say, you know what, honey, I'm sorry. I just need to go to my solitary place where I can refuel again, where God can speak to me. And it's done through prayer. 
But some people don't understand the significance of prayer, and they only pray when things go wrong. Right. Right. Why not pray and thank God when things are going right? You think you got it under control. But I, I, I tell you, I don't want to wait till my back is against the wall. I don't want to wait until I'm on, a, on, 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 on my cooling bed. I don't want to wait until I'm in, in the hospital with IVs all in my hand before I begin to say, Lord, I need you. I want to thank him in advance because in situations like that, it makes it that much more easier. But if you only pray, if you only pray to him when you're in tough situations, now your faith begins to waver. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now you don't have that trust in what you say, well, I trust the Lord with all my heart. But you say, well, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen to this. Because you neglected to, to plug into the power source. That's right. Don't wait until your battery go dead to try to recharge it right. with prayer. We were just trying to charge this bus. We waited too late. It was dead. Don't have a dead prayer life where you're at a point where nothing can jump start it. My cousin just, come on, sister. I was thinking about that because of trying to figure out like how to transition into having like a, a, a regular ongoing prayer life uh, like a couple years ago. Like trying to understand it from a different perspective as well as then trying to help anyone else walk into it and I think it was a defining it differently for me mm -hmm. that made it more of a regular occurrence. I thought about it literally as a relationship that you have with somebody. You don't the type of relationship if you only call when you need something, mm -hmm. they ain't trying to answer your phone call no. because right. you only call them when you need something. Mm -hmm. Or um, when, you know, you are favorite with the friend where I maybe hear from you twice a year. Mm -hmm. You know, those mm -hmm. those kind of relationships aren't lasting. Those kind of relationships don't have power. Right. And if you need, if you really need something, those kind of relationships ain't picking up and, mm -hmm. and it's coming out of being there because yeah. you haven't developed an actual relationship when you don't need the person. And you just regularly checking up on them. You just regularly conversing with them. So I had to, in my mindset, see God the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it came to a point where if I'm saying that you are all these things to me, I have to treat you as such, meaning we gotta have a regular conversation. Have we to. gotta have regular communication. So it's not, it's prayer time for me, but I really say it's me talking with God. Mm -hmm. I say it's me having my conversation, and when we go together and we talk, I'm talking to him like I'm talking to a friend, like God, let me play something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Woo, I'm going to have to help him with today because that is a guy. And, and then when it's like a different, because it has different levels of perspective, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. first fruit, that first thing in the morning, yes, that's a worship. That mm -hmm. is a time. That's a pouring, um, receiving. So being quiet and having a meditation part after you pray mm -hmm. so that you can eat and hear. But I think the course of the day, mm -hmm. you also have to be checking in mm -hmm. and talking and having like, a realistic conversation where you're just talking with him and not necessarily asking for something or this is a moment where um, it's a solitude because it ain't solid at that moment. Mm -hmm. You got noise from everywhere, phone mm -hmm. ringing and all these kind of things, but you're still taking a moment because you're like, okay, God, right now, I don't know what's going on. Just keep calm my mind down for the things right now. I'm from the midst of just that constant, that constant pathway. Yeah. You know, keeping the airways open. And I noticed it shifts when I haven't talked in a while. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can tell. Okay, God. Because I'm not <laughs> feeling and I'm not hearing. I, don't, I feel like there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, it's been a minute since I've talked to you. I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I apologize because I'm not. I'm now I'm treating you like one of those friends that I may just call every now and again. And then I can't expect anything from you when I'm not respecting the relationship right. that I'm trying to have. Right. Some people, when you see they, when they number come up on your phone, you know that they need something. Yeah. Those type of people. Yeah. But, but, but what I love about God is, you was gonna say something, sir? No. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay mother. The message goes to the voicemail. Yes. <laughs> And we was talking to a, uh, a man last night. I'm not kidding you. He came to our house and he was telling us about his kids. That they used him so much. Mm -hmm. 
He says that at this point, they are both, all three of them are grown kids. Mm -hmm. But he says that throughout their life, he was there for them. Him and his wife was not together, but the kids, dad, I need this, dad, I need that. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? But he said that, and it made me feel so sad. He says that they never call and say, how you doing? So when they when they call, he needs wait, to say, "Yeah, he needs to tell me, yeah, I can help you, but I'm I'm just gonna pray for you." Yeah, no, that's what I'm, that's I'm what gonna he pray was for you. Too, that's the reason why he's yes. in the position that he's in now, because he said he prayed and he asked God to lead and guide him. He says, "I know I've done my part for them, but they don't want to call him and say, Dad, can we can we come and talk?" Yeah, that's that's her point, man. Our first point was he prayed early, and and we have a we have a we have the men line. We pray every every Monday, um, on every Monday, and we, we pray. Then we go into Bible study, and we start at seven o'clock, and sometimes it's almost nine o'clock when we get done because it gets so good. And uh, my family, we have a, every Wednesday night, our family have family prayer, and we've been doing that now for almost 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever someone is going through something, someone, hey, can you can your family pray for me? Can your family yeah. pray for me? Yeah. You know, if someone is going into the hospital, we always say, look, we're going to take yeah. this day, we're going to fast, and we're going to pray yeah. for this person and different things like that. So uh, we try to use the connection with God because sometimes some people don't believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, some people will tell you, hey, can you pray for me? Because they don't believe in their own prayers. So they say, you know what? Can you and your family pray for me? Can y'all pray for my cousin? Yeah. And, and, it, and it, said, it speaks volume of you, people knowing your relationship with God. Because we wasn't always to the point where we could just go to God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes I was like, look, I'm doing my own yeah. thing. Right. Then when something happened... Oh, oh, God. Yeah. Lord, I need you right now, Lord. I'm in a, yeah. I'm in a tight situation, Lord. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you need me now. But what about then? Yeah. You know, and sometimes God has a really funny sense of humor. Real funny sense of humor. You know, so, but prayer is, is, is so, so essential. My cousin, I was just sharing with you guys a couple of weeks ago, he had a he had a hole in his lungs. And he had it since he was younger. So they tried a procedure where they went in and, and tried to close it. It didn't work. And it generally almost killed him, pretty much. And um, so he went home, they, they sat in the hospital for a few days and went home. And then they did the other s procedure where they was gonna cut the top part of his lungs out. So he sent me a picture the other day and I mean, he had a, a cut from way back there and all the way around. But during the whole time, I just kept saying, cuz, God got you. Mm -hmm. And my whole family, we went into prayer constantly mm -hmm. for him because They were, they are Jehovah Witnesses. And so I said, we're going to pray for you. We're going to call Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Call everybody. Jehovah Sikhanu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to call Jehovah, all right? And through this, I expect and I believe that Jehovah Jireh, which is our provider, is going to move on your behalf. And I told my whole family, I said, look, because I told him, I said, look, first time I told him, I said, before you go into call surgery, call, call me. <laughs> he neglected to call me. And things didn't go all I'm not saying I have I have power, but I'm connected to the source that have all power. Amen. The first time he did. So the second time I said, before you go into prayer, you better call me. I said, do you understand? Do you understand the words are coming out of my mouth? You need to call me. But I already talked to my family ahead of time. I said, this is what we're going to do on this day. I want everybody touching and agreeing. So I also reached out to some more people and said, this is what we're going to do at this time. Guess what he called me, y'all? And we began to touch and agree. He came out where they cut him from around here all the way around here. He came out much better the second time than he did the first time. He was speaking stronger the second time versus the first time. I'm like, dude, you just was opened up. 
Say, yeah, but God is good. I said, say it again. Yeah. 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 Say it one more time. Tell the world. And this was last week, y'all. Last week, Friday. He went home yesterday. And, 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 I, and I just kept telling him, man, prayer, don't, they don't worry, because God got you. Right. And I just, we just kept praying as a family, praying as a family. He just said, because I'm okay, okay. But I saw the trembling in him. So we had to, we had to help ease the pain. So, so as, as, as believers, sometimes people are going to lean on us for prayer. Are we in position to pray for those people? That's right. Are we in position to pray for those people? Do our life match our lips? That's right. Are we living what we talk about? We're talking about the power of prayer tonight. Amen. Our second verse is coming from um, um, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. So if someone get that, if you don't mind, to read that for us. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mount to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Somebody talk about that. It came to pass in those days he went out to the mountain and prayed mm -hmm. and continued all night in prayer to God. He separated himself. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Jesus Christ. Somebody else. He separated himself. He, he, he went out to the all, out of all the places he went out to the mountain. Come on, brother. I, 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 I was going to leave it alone, but I couldn't leave it alone. The significance uh, when he talks about he went to the mountain, mm -hmm. he went to a high place. Ah, and a lot of times, we be, we're expecting God to get from a practical standpoint to move in our situation, but we won't elevate ourselves above the situation so that God can, that God can deal with it. So what do you say, preacher? Well, how, how do I elevate above my situation. First of all, it's in your mindset. Mm -hmm. When you're saying that, okay, I'm dealing with this, 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 that, and the third, but I'm conditioning my mind to go higher so that I speak. I'm not speaking from where I am. And then um, Veronica can attest to that. Sometimes when, when, I pray, when we call each other pray, I say, you know, we don't pray for victory. We pray from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. So because I said I'm praying from a place of victory, I'm already elevating myself above the situation, and I'm putting a word on it. I mean, you, they, used to, they used to say, you don't have to wait until the battle is over. Yeah. You can shout now. Yeah. So he was praying from a sense of victory. He wasn't waiting until whatever he was praying for was over. He was praying like it was already over. Yeah. So he was thanking God in advance, yeah. basically, for what he was doing. Exactly. Yes. Can I say something, Pastor Palmer? The thing that sometimes prevent people from going and actually doing that is, you know how you hear pastors say, without there's no persistence without resistance. Mm -hmm. We start out speaking it, but then the moment something comes that's contrary to what you ask God for, then yeah. back yeah. up off of it. Mm -hmm right before we do it. And sometimes you yeah. gotta be just as stubborn yeah. and even more stubborn Dang. as the stuff that's coming against you. Because don't think just because you say, God, I'm believing you for a breakthrough that something's gonna happen that's not gonna happen. It's contrary. And it'll make it seem like what God spoke right. to you was a lie. Mm -hmm. And you gotta be stubborn and say, you know what God? I don't care what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep saying it until I see something different. Right. I'm gonna say it until I see it. God don't bless you when you expect him to bless you. He blesses you unexpectedly. My kids at work, they know I leave work pretty much at 4 o'clock. So at 3.59, everybody start coming out, their, coming out their bedrooms because they know I'm leaving at, I'm leaving at 4 o'clock. So I said, I ain't going nowhere today. I just sat in my office. <laughs> I just sat there in my office doing some stuff. So they come up. Why are you still here? Uh -huh. Last time I checked, I work here. Last time I checked, I am the director of here. Uh -huh. 
Well, I just thought you was going home. So, so, so God don't bless us when at four o'clock because we think God's gonna show up at four o'clock. He said, "No, I'm gonna let you suffer it a little bit longer. I'm gonna let you go through it just a little bit longer. I'm gonna let you think that you're gonna do it just a little bit longer. And when it's totally out of your hand, then guess what? Then I'll show up for you because you prayed for it already. Now we gotta expect what we pray for." We just can't pray for it and just get up off our knees and say, well, God, if you do it, you do it. But if, if you don't, I, you don't. No, you got to pray and you got to believe that what I'm asking God for, he's going to show up on my behalf. I, maybe I want it right now, but he said, no, your time ain't my time. I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to teach you patience. I'm going to teach you how to wait. I'm going to teach you long suffering through your prayer. And so that's that's when God, but but ain't nothing like when you, when y'all was a kid, y'all used to open y'all on Christmas, you used to open those toys and you would ask for something and you didn't think you was going to get it. And then when you got it, you was like, oh, mama, thank you. <laughs> when God blesses us unexpectedly, then that's when God, I thank you. Uh -huh. I knew you was going to show up and why you was going through what you was going through if you knew he was going to show up. <laughs> he was going through something but God don't work on our time That's right. so when you pray to God you pray with expectation you pray believing and you pray in faith all those things work together if you leave one of them out of the equation you just defaulted on the promissory note alright all preacher alright now because you didn't activate your faith totally. Yes, sir. You left a piece of the equation out. And, and as I was reading throughout the Bible, there was a lot of time when Jesus slipped off to the mountain. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, he just keeps going high. Uh -huh. And he, he, he even prayed, Father, take this bitter cup mm -hmm. away Mm -hmm. from me. All right. uh -huh. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. But he was still high. <laughs> so God waiting on us to elevate. That's right. Quit praying these baseline prayers. <laughs> He said, ask me for something so I can show you yes. who I am. Yes. Ask for something hard. <laughs> something you can't do. My sister, right. see it all over your face. You know that song is written all over your face. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs>
never really prayed before. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and, yes. Yes. And, 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 and I always say in those situations, God, even through this situation, give us a closer relationship yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 After my cousin come out of this situation, God, give him a closer relationship with you. Yeah. Give his wife a closer relationship yeah. with you. And, and, and so, because I, would call, I call his wife, hey, how you doing, D? Oh, I'm, I'm doing fine. I said, I just want you to know that the family is praying. Yeah. Not only for him, but you as well. She said, thank you. Yeah. Then all my family should start flooding getting her. Okay. She's like, oh, y'all so wonderful. Y'all so wonderful. All the yeah. prayers and different things going out. Like, but up until that point, oh, yeah. she never talked to any of us. My God. Up until that point, she didn't want to come around our family. Wow. All right. Because she was a Jehovah Witness and she said, Your family drinks, so I don't want to go around your family. <laughs> but tell me, God don't have a way of humbling you. Yes. That same family that was drinking what? was the same family that was reaching out to you. The same family was sending you money to make sure your bills were paid. Yes. The same family was praying for you during the whole situation. All right. All right. But you. Neglected to want to go around them when you went to the city because you say, I don't do those things. So therefore, I don't want to go around your family. But don't you know God have a way of making you come around? The same people that you say you don't want to be around? Because in that situation, they didn't have nobody else but our family. Because all of my family was praying. But it also, I said, Lord, through this experience, give her a closer relationship yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Because yeah, he can change her. Because in the end, they said, thank you, Jesus. Right. They didn't mention nothing about Jehovah. They said, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And that's the power of prayer. Because we were, we were on it. We was, we never came down on off the wall. Yeah. We stayed there. Yeah. I would call him every morning. How you doing? Before you, hold on, let me pray with you. Yeah. Every single morning. Yeah. Yeah. Before I got off the phone with him, let me pray with you. All right. I had cousins that, as you said, never sent up a prayer. They said, "Well, I just finished praying with Fred." He said, "Won't he do it?" He said, "Won't he do it?" And he said, "Well, Reggie, I thank you because." You're leading the pack. I said, no, I ain't leading the pack. He's leading the pack. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a willing vessel. He's leading the pack. Because I always say, I used to pray a prayer. Lord, send me out. Go out. I didn't know what I was praying for. It sounded good. It sounded good. I like, I like the way that sounds. Lord, use me. I'll go. Then he starts sending me, and I'm like, oh, cuz, honey, can you go with me? And then one day she told me, no, I ain't going. He called you. I <laughs> had to go about myself. She said, you told him to send you. I didn't tell him to send me. But, but through it all, God is beginning to strengthen us. He said, the second point, what he prayed all night. And there was time when I woke up in the middle of the night. I was praying for my cousin. We're the same age. And when I was working, when I was living in Kissimmee and working in Winter Park, we would talk every single morning. We haven't stopped. But we would talk from the time I got in my car until the time I made it to work. Every Amen. single morning. Amen. Every morning. Even on the weekends, he would come and say, man, I'm sleeping. <laughs> okay, it's Saturday. It's not Friday. But God built that relationship, and through that relationship, he trusted in what I live by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My God. In our conversation, our day, our, yeah, we talk, we talk, they slip Jesus in every time I got. Yeah. Amen. But our second point, he prayed all night. Mm -hmm. And Jesus found it necessary through prayer. That was his connection with God too. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. He prayed to the Father. So now we pray, Lord, help us. Down here on earth. You know, I, I, I was going to work to the, this, um, this afternoon. I went to Second Harvest and I was going to work. And on the, on, the way, on the way to work, I saw this gentleman sleeping on a sidewalk. So I took a picture of it. 
And I sent it to my family. I said, when you think life is unfair, look at this picture. As good as God has been to us, we have the audacity to complain about anything your own. So whenever you think life is unfair, I want you to look at this picture and begin to thank God for what he's given you. Because somebody have it just a little bit better than you do. And so we have to be learning how to thank God over the little things. Can we give God a hand, please? Amen. All right. Does anybody else have anything to say? Continue to move on. Power of prayer, Elder. Power of prayer, Elder. Good to see you, my brother. Man, you got to talk out the church. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Our, our, our third and final scripture, amen, comes from 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Period. Period. We should always be praying. I mean, there's as as, as, as Sister Brown was saying, there's times when 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 I'm at, I pray during the morning, but there's time in the middle of the day where I have I work with young people. Um, It's 14 of them, but it's more than 14 of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so there are some times when I have to go to my quiet place. There's times when I have to steal away. There's times when I have to go on a mountain. <laughs> because it's because I'm like, Lord, if you don't help me right now. Okay, but I can't wait till later. I need you to do it right now. Because if you don't do it right now, something bad is about to happen. So I need you to do it. Lord, I need you to do it right now. Then I go put on a song. You are my strength. Yes. Come on, preacher. Them children will take you for a thing. You work with them. And, I, and, I, and, I, and after I get done, they be like, Mr. Reggie, you okay? I say, yeah, Mr. Mr. Reggie, you okay now? <laughs> but I had to go and part, I had to go plug back in to the source because sometimes we think that just simply because we believers and we preachers, we just fool all day long? Not true. No. What? My, my battery started running low and I'm like, Lord, I, hey, Pastor Murray, how you doing, sir? I'm something doing fine. You okay, bro? Yeah, I just need to talk to you. Just, just, I'm doing good with it. I just need to hear somebody else to help me make it through the rest of the day. Uh -huh. so, so you got sometimes you gotta find that person. Mm -hmm. But if I can't get to him, I just start praying. Oh God, you gotta help me. Uh -huh. But prayer is so powerful and it's yes, so it is. and it's so needful. Yes, yes. If there was ever a time that we have to not only pray but fast and pray. The time is now. The time is now. You don't miss your health until some start hurting. Mm -hmm. You don't miss your sight until you can't see these words without glasses. You don't miss your breath until you can't get a full one. When I was going through this anxiety thing, man, I, I was going to every doctor in Orlando, man. They just, boy, you okay? I was like, I can't be okay. Something's going on here. But 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 there was times where I couldn't felt like I couldn't breathe, right. mm -hmm. and I was like, man, this is what it feels like. Yeah. So the Bible says, let everything that have breath, because when you don't have that breath and you're trying to say, Look, and, and nothing's coming out, you can't you can't. And I was like, my wife was like, Reggie. Like, I'm coming out. You ain't getting insurance money yet. <laughs> but you don't miss that breath till you can't get it. And it's something serious. And all you have to do is relax. 
When you can't get that breath and you're trying to figure it out, all you have to do is relax. And once you relax, things begin to come back to life. It just breathe real slow. But when you're sitting up there blowing like you're smoking on a pack of cigarettes, <laughs> you ain't getting nothing in. More. So you just have to just relax. That's why you say peace. Be still. I have to say that was a because I try not to talk. But anyway, <laughs> when we talk about praying constantly, um, this is one thing that, that God taught me a few years ago. Once I kind of like, I never got off of it. We always talk about like when Jesus raised his Lazarus mm -hmm. from the dead. He preached that and stoned him, he flat and all of that. But before he performs the miracle, we talk about the power of constant prayer. Mm -hmm. The first words he said was, if you look it up, it's John eleven forty one. He says, Father, I thank you that you heard me. Mm -hmm. Second part, he says, and I know that you hear me always. Mm -hmm. So, but for them, I need you to do this on prayer phrase. I need mm -hmm. you to do this for heaven. Right. So what I got from that is that when you in constant prayer, you're, you approach God with a different, different. level of confidence. Yes. yes. I'm not yes. asking you for to do that. And I said, God, I want that. Yes. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm asking. I said, God, I want that. I want it to where I'm confident that I know you heard me. Because a lot of times people get discouraged from prayer yeah. because they don't believe that their prayers are going anywhere. But if you approach God, you know what, God, I got this situation. You know what I mean? And I know you hear me. And I know you always hear me. Now for them, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Watch your prayer life. Approach God with a different level of confidence. Yeah. But a lot of times we don't do that because, like you said, we pray to God when the pressure's on. Yeah. And the thing about when you do something when the pressure's on, as soon as that pressure's off, you back up off mm -hmm. it. And then people go yeah. back to doing what they were doing. Back to normal. But if it, but if it becomes a lifestyle, it's like, you know what, God? When it, in a good time, I'm going to talk to you. When I'm in the middle of something, I'm going to talk to you. When I come out of something, I'm talking to you because I know you hear me. Then he can say, Lazarus, come come, come forth. Now, here's the crazy part. Here's what we don't miss. I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm definitely, definitely going to shut up. When you read further on into that, mm -hmm. it says that now the people wanted to kill Jesus and they wanted to kill Lazarus. Why? Because of what God did, mm -hmm. it caused the more people to believe on Jesus. What am I saying? Is it that when you approach God with another level of confidence and he do it, it it's infectious. Like you talked about with your relatives. It has to happen. It has to. And produce something that spreads on right. to something else. Yeah. So when I'm going through and I'm asking God for prayer, it ain't just for Avery. It's for whoever's going to mm -hmm. be encouraged from when I come out. Amen. 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 All right. But we, we we thank God because my father was my father was he would never go to church. Uh -huh. Anything like that. He would go, you know, we invite him to church, he would go on special events and different things like that. He would come. Mm -hmm. But I've not heard my father talk about Jesus mm -hmm. as much as I heard him talk about Jesus now yes, ever in my life. Oh my, mm. my father went through multiple Hernia surgeries. One he went. One he left things in him. Wow. One he woke up doing surgery. Oh. The third one, they gave him too much anesthesia. Oh, Lord. But you know what he said, Reggie? I thank God. Okay. I don't have a pain in my body. He's eighty-three years old. He moves slow. But it's moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And every time I talk to him and say, Dad, how you doing, Reg? I don't have a pain Amen. in my body. All right. Walk like this. Yeah. Bend over. But he don't have a pain Amen. in his body. Oh, my God. And now he give reverence God. to God. Oh, when at first he didn't do that. And so now he's like, Reg, I thank Jesus. And then when I go home, he said, Reg, you know what you need to go? You know what you know where the best church in Chicago is? Tell me, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> if you know I'm going. <laughs> because he wasn't one that 
even knew anything about the best church right in Chicago, right the city of Chicago. Right. But if he can tell me where the best church in Chicago is and who's one of the best preachers in the city of Chicago, I gotta go check him out because you you just recommended him and you wouldn't record. I don't think you understand. Yeah. So we as a family pray and God is answering our prayer. My dad, 83 years old, he lived by himself. Hmm. Don't want to live with nobody. My sister lived, this is his house, my sister lived on the next block over. He said, I don't want to be there. I want to be in my own house. Okay. 83 years old. He go visit for two hours, then he go back to his own place. Okay. Because he said, I'm okay. But one thing about it, he's not going to allow anything to take his independence away. He said, God has been good to me. And we thank him. So we thank everyone for tonight, amen, for coming out, amen, and just talking about the power of prayer, amen, and we know anything is it's definitely needed, amen. And five basic prayers, amen, um, that we sometimes pray is, uh, one, we pray for blessings. Two, we petition God. Um, three, um, intercession. Um, people always say, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? You know, um, we pray for, we have praise, you know, um, just God, just give us such an awesome, just a prayer of praise, thanking him and reverence him for what he's, not what he's going to do, as Pastor Avery said, but he's already done. So mm -hmm. our mindset of prayer has to change. You have to be on a whole, total different level. And then a prayer of thanksgiving. Yes, sir. A prayer of thanksgiving. Every day I get up, I say, Lord, I thank you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I remember I used to tell you I always wake up with pain every day. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, he's working that thing out for me, y'all. He's working it out for me, y'all. I mean, I was in pain every single morning. And he's working it out. There's, I used to have so much tension right here. I, I mean, I couldn't even, there was times where I couldn't even look straight up because my neck wouldn't allow me because of so much tension. Well, I can do it, God. But he just, I just, every night I pray, I anoint myself and different things like that. I told y'all when I'm sleeping, my wife lay hands on me while I'm sleeping, y'all. Yes, it's yes. working. Yes. And she be hitting me sometimes too, lady, y'all. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Amen. We just thank you. <laughs> hey, listen, now, now, now what, what goes on in here stays in here. <laughs> Disclaimers, okay? What goes on in your house stays in your house. Don't be going talking to this lady, okay? <laughs> Amen. So we just we just thankful. Anyone else before we before we close out? Amen. And take an offer, Sister Jenny. I just wanted to tell you something. You were talking about your dad. You reminded me of my grandfather because my grandparents were married fifty nine years. And my grandma went to church every week and paid tithes with his money. He never went to church. Mm. Thing. She stood in the gap for 59 years. Oh, wow. Yes. They died two months and three days apart. Wow. She died October 3rd. He died December 6th. He got saved two weeks before he died. Wow. Amen. 59 wow. years. Wow. wow. She went to church every week with her. That was my mother. I could do it. That was my mother. Wow. My mother went to church. Dad stayed home. Yeah. Did they like you? Well, I'm going to watch the house. I never understood this, man. I, 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 we're going to take an offer. But I never understood this. He kept saying, I'm going to I'm 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 stay home. I'm going to watch the house. That's what he did. We lived in the projects, y'all. <laughs> apartments on the floor that we lived on. And the best thing he came up with at the time, I'm going to wash the house. Dad, we got nine apartments that can wash the house, okay? But he felt compelled to wash the house, but our time wasn't his time. And so, and over him watching the house, now guess what? He's talking about Jesus. Hey man, come on, give God a hand praise tonight. Hey Amen. Amen. So we thank God for everyone coming out. Amen. We pray that you enjoyed tonight. Amen. We pray that something was said that is, will, will, will change your mindset. Amen. On prayer. Amen. And that will increase our prayer lives. Amen. And give God just a little bit more time. Amen. Because I, I tell you, he's, he's one that don't run out of time. 
Amen. And, and, and he's willing to listen to us as long as we got the breath to breathe, as long as we got the word to say. And even when we run out of words, all we got to do is just be still and then allow him to speak. Amen. So let's give God a hand, praise, amen. As we prepare our hearts, amen, to give on tonight. Amen. And as we prepare to give, we just want to. We have a few um, engagements coming up on the 29th, I believe it is, of October. Amen. We have Holy Man that is coming up. Amen. And if you, if you, if you have any sons, nephews, grandkids that would like to attend, please, please, please um, let them see us. Amen. See Brother Cameron, and he'll get them registered for the service. Amen. And we're going to have a wonderful time. Um, and the Lord, we're going to have classes, breakout classes. We're going to have some breakfast in the morning, amen, and then at lunchtime, amen, we're going to have a nice, um, somewhat healthy um, lunch, amen, <laughs> yes, yes, and so, and then on this weekend, we also, we have an, um, our, our dinner sale on this weekend as well, um, from 11 to, uh, I believe, 1 o'clock um, or 2, everything is gone, so please don't be the one to wait till the last minute to come out and look for something. We don't have nothing because it just hurts my feelings when y'all come and we don't have nothing else to give. So I'm going to challenge you all to come early. Amen. Why it's still hot and fresh. Amen. So if you amen, anyone have to give, if you raise your hand, I'll come by and see you. Uh, that way you don't have to walk right now. I'll just come see you. Fair get hers online. <laughs> And dismiss us tonight. Oh, you bring us very afraid on my height, on my brother. Let us pray. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father God, we just want to thank you for the word tonight. We ask that you restore every virtue that Pastor Form has exalted. We ask that you continue to bless, keep and strengthen our pastor and his family. And God, we thank you for our gifts that was given. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest ruler and by now henceforth and forever. Let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, my brother. Good to see you, man. I can make you. You can make me like you.